Uh, welcome everybody uh, to East Hills Parish Council meeting of, is it the 8th of February today? 9th. 9th, there Ninth. we go, it's quite close. Quite close, so what's first up? He says he lost his agenda. I knew I should have printed it. Um, to receive and consider for acceptance any apologies for absence from members of the council. We haven't got any, have we? No. Excellent. To receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests or non registrable interests by members of or the clerk and to consider any requests for dispensation. Have we any uh, declarations of interest? No. Yes, we do. For me, anyway. I'm on the, I'm on the agenda. Excellent. So we, we've noted that. Yeah. Super. Receive questions or comments from members of the public regarding items of the agenda or representations from any member who's declared a uh, personal interest. So have we got any members of the public? None present. Okay, so I'm guessing we haven't got any questions. Any particular public questions for any members of the council? None. Mm, no. Excellent. Um, representations from any member who has declared a personal interest. So does that mean we could potentially get a, a why or wherefore from Brendan or not? Yep. yep. Okay, Brendan, is there anything you would like to tell us about your application? Okay, um, so this is an application that has been going on for, I would say, about 15 or 16 months. West Sparks have been quite good, actually. So we've been engaging over end of 19 into the whole of 2020. And they've been advising me because of the heritage nature of my house, the paint, the, the, the um, paint, uh, should we say, breakdown of paint that I'm allowed to use. And we've been talking to manufacturers. And Deborah, who's obviously part of the team at West Sparks, for conservation has been really, really good. So she's put me in contact and we've had dual calls over 2020 to look at the type of paint manufacturers that we should use. So I've got them involved from the start uh, and it's been good. So what we're trying to achieve is we're going to be, because of the, we're, we're pure white at the moment in, in basic understanding and coming down the high street where you are, Andrew, as we turn the corner, lots of trucks, lots of lorries. There's gonna be a lot more of that if Compton goes through, it's turned to the colour. So we're having to consistently go out quite regularly throughout a 12 month period to tap it up and paint it and so forth to try and um, get rid of the dirt and grime. So pose questions with West Box. I said to them, listen, we want to alter the colour of the two walls, wall on, on the high street and then the wall that's enclosed within the cartilage of the house that's facing down Broad Street. They are in agreement, but fill in the, the, the forms effectively to do that. And then in terms of the window colour, um, working with um, looking at old, old photographs of the house, the house originally back in the sheep bear days was white. The window colour was white. I don't know why they turned it to black, but it, it was white. So we want to go back to white because in the summertime, the windows, because of the black, they crack like mad when the heat comes in on the high street and on broad street. And we just have to keep going out quite regularly and, and chip away the paint and repaint us. So we're going back to white, which was the original color from the olden days, shall we say. Uh, and we hope that that will resolve the problem of the sunlight cracking the paint. So that's the main application. Okay. Uh... Fabulous. Okay. Uh, so next item. To approve the minutes of the virtual meeting of the Parish Council on Tuesday the 19th of January. Has everyone had a chance to have a look at these? Mm -hmm. Everyone happy that they're a true and accurate record? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll take those as true and accurate record and sign them uh, as and when. We can. Right. Uh, to discuss any matters arising from the minutes, is there anything, Fen, that particularly pops up? <coughs> no. Okay, right. So straight in to consider the uh, application uh, that Brendan's just briefly talked about, changing the two rendered walls, repainting the exterior windows, 
black to white. Uh, anyone got any comment? Um, I have got a picture of Dove, Dove Taint, so that I could share with you in case Please you do. what that was. So um, hopefully you can see that. Oh, magnificent. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Looks like a cracker. <laughs> Hopefully it won't have those holes in it, but yeah, exactly, that is the colour. But I suppose, yeah, I mean, it's sort of dove grey, isn't it? Not, It's not yeah. bright white, it's not grey grey, no. it's kind of in the middle, which would should stop any kind of grime and being quite so noticeable as it is on the white. Yeah. yeah. The, the only kind of question I've got Brendan is why that particular yeah. colour is there any kind of heritage references to it or anything no no that's a good point actually no we we um had a load of heritage samples colour samples and, and and Deborah and the team obviously came up we came up with the colour chart and everything we looked at it and then they're obviously used to doing it a lot more than I have and they came back with a different kind of colour samples and anything else would I feel would have been uh, a bit more severe in terms of colour. It would have been brilliant, I suppose, from the perspective of if you've got dirt and grime, it wouldn't really show up because it would be a lot darker. But we didn't feel with the combination of the white windows, and of course we've got white windows also on the, the coach house that was renovated in 2019. Um, yeah. So looking at the colour aspects, we, we, we stuck with that. It's crossed between, as Fen said, it's off-white, to being French grey of type, you know, it's a bit less than French grey. So we went with that and tested this to see what it would actually look like. Uh, and we were happy with this. So anyone got any comments, questions? No. What are you doing with your front door, Brendan? Is that staying black? Uh, the, that will end up being, it's white and black at the moment, so the plan will be, it will be renovated and it'll still retain white and black, so the windows will be white. I suppose, your, I suppose your property is only ever purely white for about a week after you've painted it. I mean, it's I an off white anyway, isn't it? So Yeah, it's, it's, an, not it's an off white. white. No, it, it isn't as much of an impact. And obviously some of the colours out there for heritage buildings that we were given are, are quite dark, actually. I'm surprised they get through, but they are anyway. Uh, it, it wouldn't suit it when we tested the colours. They were a bit too dark for the okay. building. So looking at it, we're happy with that colour. Anyone got any other comments, etc., etc.? So if we're going to go to a vote, then we need to pop Brendan into the waiting room. So it's... Um, Perfect. We can do this appropriately. See you in a minute, Brendan. Don't go anywhere. All right, thanks. Yeah. It's one of the oddities of if Brendan was just a member of the public, we wouldn't have to do that. But because he's parish councillor, we have to do that. So if we were in a formal meeting in the school, um, it's more for information, we'd ask you to actually leave the room. So it's... Uh, it's, it's local government law, et cetera, et cetera, just to ensure that you aren't giving the evil eye or something to someone, I guess, um, in terms of comments. <laughs> so what are our options in terms of voting for this? Can you just remind us? Um, so it's support or object. Okay. So support. all those in favour of supporting? Support. Yeah. So that's supported. Um, I don't think we've got any particular comments as such, have we? Not for me. I, I think I'm just really pleased that he's worked with the, the heritage team. Yeah, I sort of wonder whether the only comment I would kind of want even vaguely near it is, you know, um, not good to hear that there was liaison with the, the, the heritage team from West Berkshire Council, i.e. as a sort of pointer to anyone else. Yeah. All happy? Yeah. Yep. Right, shall I bring him back in? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we said no, Brendan. <laughs> oh, I need to go off on mute. Hello, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, um, so yeah, what will happen tomorrow is I'll fill in the parish observation sheet and send that back to Wendy Park. So thank you all. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, everyone. Right, to discuss the purchase, oh, it's, really, it's getting really controversial now, to discuss the purchase of new dog bins for the centre of the village and new collections contracts from Triangle Management. Yes. Um, so Tracy, I thought that bit at the bottom of Farrier's Lane was just a bit of scrappy land by the, the great big floodlight. And you're actually saying it's someone's garden, aren't you? Which it yeah. may well be. Yeah, it is, because it belongs to the, the house. Right on the bottom. Beyond, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they were the ones who actually cut down the tree, and that's, um, it's, their, it's their bit of land. That's right, I remember. I, yeah, just in my head, because I, I haven't walked down there for a very long time. Yeah. I sort of thought, oh, isn't that just a bit of sort of highways land? Mm. But but could we not put it onto the lamppost, though? Can I share a document with you? Because I've got some plans. Go on, then. Is it a cunning plan? <laughs> right. Can you see that? OK. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so the red dots are our current dog bins. Yep. Um, and as you can see, they're kind of around the perimeter. They're actually really well located for someone who was a former dog owner. Yeah, absolutely. Um, these are all under contract with West Parks. Uh, yeah. We pay for annually, but they don't have the capacity to add um, any further rounds in. Yeah. So we're we'll doing some investigations. Um, so the dog mess is kind of centering a lot around the middle of the village. Yeah. Because there isn't really... No, you have to you would have to walk well yes with your dog but yeah i mean if a dog does its business around here you know yeah. responsible dog owners bag it put it in their pocket and wait till they get to a bin or put and it in their own bin or one exactly. of the but, you know, waste bins you know there is the option of us putting in some extra bins around this area what about what about by the the pond by kind of near the pump thing or that because there's a couple of benches and there's a really ugly bin there already we've got one here just at, but just beyond hildersley Have yeah we? i know but that's actually quite a distance down there and if you didn't know it was that if you, it's basically if you don't know it's there then you wouldn't see it i know i know so anyway these are the most attractive bins i can find right and they're actually 40 liters so they're actually bigger than the current bins yeah the, the investigations that's gone on um so they are 131 pound each um which includes this post excellent um and then that for the dog's benefit <laughs> <laughs> well, with this we're a bit freer about where we put it um and then chris can install them at about 65 pound a bin for us as he did up at the school um, i've spoken to triangle who are the only people in the area that are doing contracts and they are proposing £20 per visit to empty the three new bins. And due to the puppy lockdown boom, um, they recommend it should be emptied fortnightly. So we'd be looking at £40 a month. Um, there is VAT on it, but we can claim it back. And just in terms of location, um, we could have one on the green um, by the Jubilee bench. But we've already got a big litter bin there. Yeah, I did think of maybe Broad Street near the bus stop. And then, that sounds sensible. And then maybe something near the allotments, the orchard, because the, um, the nearest one to that is at the back of uh, Farry, um, Farriers, I think. But that was just some ideas. But I'm trying to find land we actually own. <laughs> but yeah, we, Abingdon Road is the one that worries me the most, funnily enough, because... Yeah. You know, in, in a perfect world, I think Broad Street by the bin is really clever suggestion. Um, but it's that, that that's that's why I was hoping that bit by the light. Because I think that would be absolutely perfect because it would mean that, you know, if you were walking along Abingdon Road and you picked it up, you could dump it in there on, uh, on, on your way wherever. So, are you thinking... Oh, Sorry, I've, I've had representation from, from uh, a couple of names in the village that I won't mention. Okay. But um, 
And the representation has been that um, the dog bins that exist today are quite discreet. They've been put in places where, you know, lanes where dog walkers frequently, yeah, yeah. et cetera. Uh, and the comment was that, that having more um, kind of like foreign or modern objects in the centre of the village was something that they felt kind of that they would object to. They weren't very, they weren't very keen on having bins in the centre of the village. And it got me to thinking after having the conversation as to wondering whether if you're not a responsible dog owner and you're letting your dog mess, if you have 80 bins in the village, would you still be taking bags out with you and bagging it up? Um, I think we have a problem where we have irresponsible dog owners rather than a lack of bins. Um, and I'm wondering whether we could do some sort of prevention rather than adding more bins to the centre of the village. Yeah. I mean, my personal view, and I did, I mentioned this to Fen before, I, I agree with what Mike's saying. I absolutely don't think we need to. I am a dog owner. And at the end of the day, I would always go out with a couple of bags in my pockets um, as I'm going walking and would pick up. So us having the bins that we have, like up at the recreational ground and everything, I think we have enough bins. It's about educating the dog owner that they should be picking up their mess and either sticking it on their buggy if, if they've got a dog and kids and taking it home and putting it into their own bin or putting it into a village bin as they walk home. I, I mean, I, I don't go out looking for bins. I, I use the one on, on um, down Hayden's Lane because I walk down that way. I use it when I go up the wreck. Um, but outside of that, if I'm nowhere near a bin, I'll just bag it up, I'll tie a knot on it, and I will either walk home with it or find a bin as I'm walking back home or down the village. So I don't think we need to be investing more money. because no, it's, like it's like a 700 pound commitment, isn't it? If we yeah. add a bin for 150 quid and then pay yeah. 480 pounds a year to have it cleaned out twice, yeah. Yeah. regardless of whether it needs it or not, they do that visit. Um, yeah. uh, and like I say, I think, we've, I think we do have a problem. Now, whether it's whether it's signage that says East Hillsley welcomes responsible dog owners or whatever that type of thing is, I don't, I'm not entirely sure which way forward to go with it, but I think the education of the owner, that there's an intolerance of letting your dog mess and not tidying up after yourself, um, you know, I, I think, is, I think is, the, is the way that we should go. Um, having said that, I did a walk today um, in the lovely snow and I walked around the loop and came down Abingdon Road back to Sheepdown where I live. And uh, there was no dog mess on Abingdon Road today. So there was nothing obvious there today, but I have been in recent weeks and there has been a considerable amount. So I don't know whether that's indicative of the weather or whether we're actually broadcasting on social media, et cetera, and actually getting to the dog owners who are thinking a bit more, I don't want to be the one that's caught out with my dog messing and not tidying up after myself. So I'm not sure. My other point briefly is we've got two bins in the recreational ground and the one that is closest to what would be the high street up onto the A34 going southbound. I don't know because I don't really go in that entrance. I don't know the volume of people that go down past the and thing, down the high street and into the recreational ground that way. Whether if there is a bin issue, we redistribute the bin and not have two bins in the rec. But I don't think we should be spending any more money on bins. It's just I don't think they're in the wreck. They're not in the wreck, are they? <laughs> Aren't they in oh, Millennium Green? Oh, no, in the wreck. Green. Sorry, they're in the Millennium Green. Yeah, sorry. Millennium yeah, basically, Green. they were put there, Brendan, because you've got two entrances. So yeah. depending on which way you go, it, it was always... They were kind of put into... You absolutely have no excuse. Because whichever yeah. door you go out... Because ideally, we don't really want lots and lots of dog poo in the green. But... No. It, so I think they're kind of okay. Uh, I I, can't, I get the whole thing with the kind of we don't want them, you know, in the centre of the village or anything. Or that's why you know, kind of discreetly on somewhere would be great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the other thing some councils have done is obviously the dog DNA thing. But I have no idea how much that costs, but I would yeah. bet you that's really successful. Which is fine. You know, we'll get it tested and track it back to the owners because I would think uh, this is pretty much the same people yeah, yeah. yes yeah because you, you you know as Brendan said most of the dog owners I, I know and I certainly do it myself I, I've got poo bags in every item of clothing I own um, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I go in my back pocket, I can find one. And and I don't even have any dogs at the moment. Um, so I, I don't really know how we crack this. <coughs> I have a dog and I don't care. Uh, I mean, you know, because on one hand, it's kind of vaguely amusing. And then, of course, when you actually start getting into the effects it can have in terms of, you know, it can affect kids eyesight and stuff like that it's not and also you know it has an effect on um farm animals and stuff like that it can cause all sorts of things so but it's more the sort of concern that someone can't be bothered when we have so many bins you know, yeah relatively know. speaking we have a lot you know because we've got the rubbish bins as well which okay you're not meant to use but i'd much rather people use them we know they get emptied um, having that number of dog bins is actually quite impressive, I think. And if you remember, probably was it two and a half years ago at least when we were sitting up in the school and this conversation came up again. And a number of people, if we had the recording, I know we won't, but if we did, you'd see. A number of people in the room went, oh my goodness, you mean carry the poo in a bag home? Oh no, no, I wouldn't do that. No dream in that, I wouldn't do that. No, I want to have a bin right beside me. If you want me to take it home, oh, I wouldn't do that. And it's really fascinating because I think as a dog owner, you, you would. Well, I feel you, you would. You'd go and find the nearest spin and obviously yeah. delicately put it in a bag and tie a knot in it and hold on to it uh, but you would take it to a bin and the issue Dyson as you see even in the Millennium Green in the far corner they were just firing the bag over into his field um, and they, they spotted it. I, I don't know actually what the, alter, what the option is. I don't feel more bins is going to all of a sudden change the mindset of said individuals that do that. No, it is a human problem as well, because we don't yeah. have dogs loose in the village. I've never seen a dog loose in the village. Yeah, it's not stray dogs. It's dogs who are owned and walked and... Yeah. Uh, and OK, fine. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, we've got a lot more visitors coming to walk in the village recently. You, you get the sort of professional walking brigade for their hours exercise. And some of them bring dogs. And you can kind of say, well, if you don't know where the dog bins are because you don't live here, but you still should be picking it up. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the whole kind of thing about having a dog and being responsible is, you know, you look after it and you look after its effect. But what about putting up dog map, dog bin map? It, uh, by the bus stop or, you know, where the, sort of the bins, just put in a dog bin map so people can see where they are rather than going looking for them. Yeah, I sort of wonder whether, or, you know, we could do the same in the lay-by fen, because as I said, some of the professional walkers park in the lay-by on the high street, uh, Broad Street, they park in, they park by the pond. See, that—that that is the thing with one on Hayden Road. You only really know it's there if you know it's there, because it's kind of tucked behind the kissing gate. Mm -hmm. And you can barely see it. So you might even be walking your dog around the pond and not actually know there's one there. Yeah. Well, I could print off some maps and laminate them and we can put them around the village. Well, I, yeah. I, I, I kind of wonder, well, should we do that as a first step yeah. and see if that, I mean, you could still got, have to got, make sure you pick up. Yeah, because you've got that post where the duck, the duck sign is. You could pop yeah. that on there because that's quite easy to see. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And the usual know, stuff, fan, like social media and stuff as well. Because I mean, it, I would say we'd look at any resource that somebody who's thinking about visiting the area would go to. So parish council website, that type of stuff. And if we've got a little bit of information around there for dog walkers, then we can socialise it that way as well and try to capture. Yeah, and I wonder if, I mean, you can try it two ways. Because if you, if you put dog bins and litter bins, you're kind of doing two things at once, which is, you know, please don't throw your crap all over the village mm. and please don't throw your dog <laughs> mess all over the village you know because it just you know it just it's just so depressing every day when you walk out the village to see the the coffee cups the tins that people just yeah. chuck out of their window yeah and i just genuinely have to sort of think you know apart from being really supremely antisocial they do realise they're throwing money out of the window. 
because every object that needs picking up costs the people who were throwing it out of the window a little bit of money. It's one way or another, it's coming out of their pocket. So you do have to be monumentally stupid to start throwing five pound notes out the window. But hey, there's thousands of people do it. You know, the, the A34 going into Newbury is disgusting. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and yet, you know, somehow magically the fairies will come away and, and remove it for nothing, apparently. So, yeah, so perhaps, perhaps I don't know, Fem, I don't mind whether we kind of do the dog, pin, dog bins of East Dilsley walk. You know, couch to five yeah. k doing the circuit of the dog bins, um, or if you if we chuck on a dog bins and litter bins or litter bins and dog bins resource, you know, with a please please dis please di di dispose of your uh, your dog mess responsibly and your litter. Yeah, let's let's work on an educational campaign first before we start splashing yeah. the cash. Yeah, and then we will get yeah. told off for putting signs up everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But no, I, I, have I, great, I, like I have a great, I have a great, I think that's a good idea, I have a great wildlife camera in the garden and I've been thinking I'd love to just bring it out and strap it to a tree down, here, down in Elton Abingdon Road and see who those offenders are because it will ping back to the computer. But I thought that was a bit, I don't know what the rules and regulations are on that. So yeah, you'd have to put a sign up saying you were yeah. filming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <that's> <laughs> Yeah. I think we need a CCTV policy. Oh, you would. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. It's Do we know are, are there particular sites where this is particularly prevalent? Yeah, down the Abingdon Road. Beyond, yeah, beyond the White Gates. And okay. even I found I don't know what that lay. If you go down the Abingdon Road and turn up to where Hugh, where the back of Hueys. Uh, and you walk up the ridgeway that way along as you climb that hill there's a lot of there was a lot of dog mess there yeah. yeah but annoyingly there's a bin at the end of that footpath yeah <laughs> so yeah but uh, there isn't Laziness. at the bottom but yeah um yeah i mean that, maybe that's one place you could consider putting it it's, it's, i because i i you know generally what i do is if i'm on the circuit if you know you're coming back, you'll pick it up and pop it in one on the way back. Or if you're not, you take it with you until you get to one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's try the education thing and then we'll, we'll see where we go from there. And also, I think, you know, we'll just whack it in the communicator again. Yeah. And maybe make more of it, Fen. You know, we're really disappointed that despite all the you know, the notifications and what have you, this is still a problem. And, and you know, I don't know whether, as I said, the, uh, the, the, the dog DNA thing might be a bit extreme, but, you know, maybe needs must. Maybe we should talk to West Berkshire Council about how they effectively do it because, you know, ultimately a lot of it's about, you know, you will be caught, you will be named and shamed. It's incredibly effective doing things like that so i don't know maybe brendan's idea with cameras isn't so off the mark or if there's a friendly resident down abingdon road whose camera happens to direction. point in the, the, the right direction and notices the same person and dog five days of, in a row yeah. Yeah, you don't actually you don't actually need a camera um you know if you've got the right nouse about you go to the pub and you speak to the guys at the pub and they they know who it is. They've told me. <laughs> I'm not naming names, but uh, they, they have told me a, too. <laughs> yeah, they have a they have a very good that knowledge of who who it is. So um, yeah, don't need a camera, Brendan. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Well, uh, yeah. Let's see if we can uh, persuade, educate, cajole people into being a bit more responsible because. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's something about not doing things on your own doorstep, and that includes the place you live. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let, you know, let's see if we can uh, get a positive outcome, I think, from that. Because, you know, we can just do better. We, what are people doing that's, that's so important they can't spend 30 seconds picking it up? I thought we were in lockdown. It gives you something extra to do. Uh, it's fulfilling giving back to your community. Um, 
yeah, let's see where we go with that. So item eight, uh, to approve a donation of £100 uh, to West Berkshire Library Services, which I believe we've done in the past as an annual donation. Anyone got any thoughts? Yeah, I'm trying did they, to... Yeah, did they come round to the village, Ben? Is this the old-fashioned bus truck sort of scenario? I can't remember. It used to go down the high street here and sit outside. Yeah. Obviously, so. that's not happening at the minute. No, nope. but it is part of the, the overall sort of libraries service. Uh, yeah. service so, um, and it obviously goes to Hildersley when it can, which is really good for yeah. them. Um, but, um, you know, this donation goes towards all of the library services and their online provision has massively ramped up and they're doing some brilliant stuff for kids and education and courses and workshops. And so it kind of feels like now more than ever they need this and we've got the s137 budget so we can take it fine from. yeah all I'm those in, all those in yeah. favor yeah great splendid mr carnegie's dream lives on right item nine to discuss matters for future consideration and for information um, I just wanted to ask about issue 103 of the EIC. Is this something you want me to start or does anyone have any inklings of anybody in the village willing to do it? Oh, yeah. Um, I, are we, we're going back to five, aren't we? We agreed five rather than six. Yeah. Fine. You, I need, yeah, I need to chase them. So let me chase them and finalise it and I'll let you know tomorrow. Yeah, because I, we I, might. Sorry. Sorry. I was just thinking we probably need something to come out around March time, beginning of March. Yeah. Fine. Do I'll we, chase it and I'll let you know. Do we want to see where we're going with lockdown and things like that? Yeah. Um, only because, you know, if we have got a pile of information about what you suddenly can or can't do, how you should or shouldn't behave, it would be great to have an issue like that rather than bring it out three weeks earlier where... We're still sort of going yeah, still at home yeah so um it's the boris's roadmap is that the 22nd of february did i read i uh, think and schools are back yeah. on the 8th currently aren't they yeah so what do you think andrew? when do you think andrew do you think stuff will be made to the public at the end of feb or I'm, I'm thinking more at the end of March rather than start of March. That's better. Um, and, and I think equally, depending on what happens or, or, or not with the infection rates, variants and God knows what else, they may, you know, we may just have actually some good news to, to, to put out or guidance for people because, you know, lots of people won't have had their vaccination by then. Lots will have, but there'll still be, a, you know, a decent amount of people who won't have yeah i've um, also got to factor in year end and our audit so okay. i can't do anything for that until we close on the 31st of march so okay. but I, i've got bandwidth to prepare that issue during march and get yeah. it to the printers so that that's done and then i can concentrate april on year end okay i mean is there anything else we should sort of really be thinking about covering off in there apart from Obviously, plans with the pond. Yeah. Uh, I dog. don't know if, if dog dog bins. Huge education is it you? Um, et cetera, et cetera. We know who it is. Um, I, I yeah. And so I'm guessing really it's about um, probably nearly all public healthy stuff. I think we should probably put out. Yeah. And again, if the downland practice want to put anything out of the CCG or public health, um, any of the other sort of supportive stuff, because there's all sorts of mental health courses running and- Yeah, it all comes through to- Exercise stuff. And I yeah. put it in a folder. Um, and also I've got a distribution list of all the contributors um, and I message them about three, four weeks before deadline and then start getting their articles in. So, so, I, so I, think, I think it's worth doing that, but I think let's see where we go on this 22nd of, uh, yeah. Feb uh, from the government because the numbers are still way way high. The hospitals are still 
far too busy. You know, we're a long, long way from being out of the woods just yet. Uh, Righty ho, I think we're back to receiving questions or comments from members of the public, and it's good to see we have some public. We do. Um, Although it does rather sort of say, uh, would Jill or Stuart like to ask a question? <laughs> Nothing from me, thanks, guys. Sorry I was late. You missed all the good stuff. <laughs> I thought I'd do. Um, Jill, anything from you? Probably not. Um, is Caroline still with us? Sorry, nothing from no, me. <laughs> okay, sorry. Caroline? <laughs> no, she's had to leave. Had to oh, oh, okay, okay. So uh, I think if we've got no other questions, um, we can call um, the meeting to a close, uh, I think. Cool. Right. So congratulations, everybody, for no Jackie Weaver moments. I'd like to thank our own personal Jackie Weaver yet again, Fen, for all the remarkable work, <laughs> not having to throw any senior members of the parish council out of the meeting. <laughs> so let's count that as a success. Um, and um, hope everyone stays well and safe and keep your two metres, etc. And we'll, we'll hopefully be meeting in public very soon, hopefully. Yeah. Thanks, all. Oh, see you later. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. 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 bye.